Happy Thursday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon where you get an update on what's happening in the tropics. We've had a very busy week and of course a major hurricane making landfall in the southeastern U.S. Of course that was Hurricane Idalia making landfall as a strong category three hurricane of 125 miles per hour yesterday morning around the big bend of Florida. Throughout the day yesterday, Adalia continued to weaken as it raced to the north and east. And over the last 24 hours, you will see that Adalia has really been weakening as it pushes off of the Carolina coast and out into the Atlantic. You can see that it was fairly organized about 12 hours ago near the Carolinas, but now it is pushed offshore and it's kind of fallen apart and it lost that typical classic look of a strong tropical cyclone. So because of that, it is no longer considered a tropical cyclone. It is now post tropical cyclone Idalia, but it does still have some decent wind with it and it will pose a risk to Bermuda as we sail into the weekend. So it brought a ton of rain to portions of Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas, and it still is going to pose a risk to Bermuda by this weekend as it tracks closer to that area. I want to go back though and show you some of these impressive rain totals stretching from northern Florida through southeast Georgia and into the Carolinas anywhere from close to five to almost 12 inches of rain showing up. This is just over the last 48 hours. So this just basically shows you why there have been so many reports of major flooding. Also many areas in Florida outside of what you see on this map picked up several inches of rain from Idalia as well. So here's the latest with Idalia, which is now a post tropical cyclone, as I just mentioned to you. Winds though still fairly strong. We've got maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour in this moving pretty quickly still instead of moving to the north or northeast now to the east at 21 miles per hour and that pressure up to 994 millibars so the pressure is now increasing and the wind should start to decrease a bit as the system kind of falls apart a bit we do have that movement though to the east it's eventually going to shift to the south and east and then track back to the northeast very close to bermuda by this weekend so friday afternoon we've got this as a 50 mile per hour tropical storm saturday afternoon around 1 p.m still winds around 50 miles per hour as it is going to be just to the south and west of bermuda where we now have tropical storm watches in place for the potential impacts from post tropical cyclone Idalia. By Sunday afternoon around 1 p.m. this should be just to the east of Bermuda so that's going to be that risk for some 50 60 mile per hour winds and some very heavy rain of course high surf rip current risk will increase for Bermuda. Sunday afternoon and evening Monday starting to push away from the Bermuda area but overall it will continue to be a risk for Bermuda as we go through the weekend but at least it is pushing away from the U.S. so it looks like conditions will improve for Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas as Adalia weakens and moves away. Not only do we have Adalia, but we still have Franklin, which has just been churning out here in the Atlantic for several days, made a fairly close pass to Bermuda over the last day or two. Now it is starting to push away from Bermuda and it will continue to track off to the east northeast. Right now moving east northeast at 14 miles per hour and it is still a category one hurricane with 90 mile per hour winds. Earlier this week it was a strong category four hurricane not far from category five so it has weakened quite a bit pressure at 970 millibars but it is still a hurricane and we will continue to track it but at least it is moving away from Bermuda it's forecast to still be a category one hurricane by Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. with 70 mile per hour winds and then it should start to lose some of those tropical characteristics as it pushes to the north and east up into the north central Atlantic into those cooler waters it will still pack a punch with some stronger winds, but overall it will be moving away from Bermuda and moving away from the U.S. We've also got some other systems we're monitoring out in the Atlantic Basin. Of course, we've got post-tropical cyclone Idalia now in the western Atlantic. We've got Hurricane Franklin east of Idalia in the western Atlantic. And then south and east of those systems, we've got the remnants of GERT and Tropical Storm Jose, so two additional systems. We actually had Tropical Depression 11 switch and strengthen to Tropical Storm Jose. So now we've got 
three named systems in the Atlantic. That is a lot, but of course we are getting very close to that peak of hurricane season. So what's going to happen with the remnants of GERT and with Tropical Storm Jose? Well, they're both kind of drifting to the north and it looks like Tropical Storm Jose will get absorbed by Franklin, which is much larger, much stronger. So it's going to kind of roll into Franklin and Franklin is going to kind of suck it up and absorb it. And that will be the end of Tropical Storm Jose. As far as the remnants of GERT are concerned, there's only a low chance for any type of tropical cyclone development as they move to the north. So overall, it doesn't appear that we're going to have any major impacts from either one of those systems. They will likely drift north and not be a threat to any major land areas. Let's expand the view and show you that we've got more action in the central and eastern Gulf excuse me, central and eastern Atlantic. Nothing in the Gulf right now, but we do have Invest 94L with now a high 80% chance for development over the next two days and a high 80% chance for developing into a tropical depression or a tropical storm over the next week. Moving off to the northwest, it's still not far from the west coast of Africa, so we've got several days to monitor this, but this is yet another tropical wave that we're going to have to closely watch as it pushes across the warm waters of the Atlantic during that peak time of hurricane season. Also, the National Hurricane Center has this area outlined in yellow as an area to watch for next week because it is being considered a possible development area. Nothing happening there at this point, but models are indicating that an area of low pressure could develop here and drift to the west northwest. And there's no shot for anything developing over the next few days, but over the next week, a low chance that we could get yet another tropical depression or tropical storm popping up here in the East Central Atlantic. So a ton of systems to monitor. We've already been through several names so far in the Atlantic Basin for this hurricane season. We've now gone through Idalia. And now as of today, we have Tropical Storm Jose in the Central Atlantic. So if we get either one of those systems in the Eastern Atlantic to develop, the next name on the list would be Katia. And then we'd have Lee, Margo, and Nigel. So we've really been cranking through these names. It is really starting to pick up out there in the Atlantic Basin, and we still have not reached the peak of our hurricane season. We're very close to the month of September, just a day or two away, but we do still have that peak to get through. And even after September 10th, which is the peak of hurricane season, things typically historically stay fairly active, at least through the middle of October. And then we start to see the action usually start to drop off after that. So we've still got a ways to go. We've been fortunate in Southeast Texas and Houston. We've been spared no tropical action headed our way just yet, but we all know how quickly that can change. And it even doesn't take a hurricane to cause a lot of damage. Of course, just think of Harvey, which was a tropical storm as it dumped around 50 inches or more of rain over parts of the area some years ago. So definitely keep in mind that these things can pop up and develop quickly and you certainly need to be prepared. You need to have a plan in place, a plan of action before we go under any tropical alerts, any watches or warnings. Nothing headed our way now, but just make sure you're prepared and you have that hurricane emergency preparedness kit. You know your evacuation routes if you live in an evacuation zone and just make sure you have the proper insurance that you need and make sure you grab our Fox 26 weather app for plenty of important weather information dealing with the tropics and also you can get all of your local weather as well. Our weather videos, our forecasts, our radar, you can track anything that pops up there as well. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. This is your Thursday afternoon tropical weather update. Have a great evening.